as you go forward in this week, everything concerning you, everything in your life, when men look at you, it will be an expression of the grace of God. People will look how small you are. People will see out how ordinary you are. But the result will be greater than your size. The result will be greater than your size. Your life will be an expression of God's power. Your life will be an expression of the goodness of God. Your life will be an expression of the grace of God. Your result will be bigger than your effort. Your result will be bigger than your effort. Your result will be bigger than your effort. Your testimony will sound like a lie. In the name of Jesus. Come on, put your hands together for Jesus if you believe it. Give God a resounding outcome offering if you believe it. You may be seated. God bless you. And let's appreciate our praise team. Come on, let's have our praise team. Yes. Yes. Amen. This morning I will bring you a very short message. Overpowering your giant. Overpowering your giant. Because no matter how you look at it, no matter how you wish it away, at some point in life, there will be a giant that you need to fight. The giants, they don't announce they are coming. But when they speak, you know there's a giant around. You will know there's a giant around. They don't give you an announcement that they are coming. But giants don't show up. And when giants show up, they are timing. They have a time they show up. They will time you at the greatest expression of your testimony. They will time you at the time when your promotion is about to manifest. And the giant will just show up. Giants don't waste their time. When they come, they come for a specific assignment. And the assignment is to stop the place God is taking you to. But the truth is that child of God, every giant that shows up in your life, every uncommon adversary that shows up in your life is only a stepping stone for you to go to the next level. Amen. Look at the person and say, levels are changing. Levels are, changing. Levels are going higher. Levels are, levels are going higher. And we have not text this morning. We had David a more who was just minding his business in the shipyard. Smelling like the shipyard. Smelling like the sheep he was taking care of. Never, he never knew that a roll call was made that even his father did not include him. He never knew that right there, his father has told the prophet of Israel that he had seven children. He never knew that he was among the counted the children of, of Jesse. He was discounted as one of them. And he was there minding his business. And a call was made. Bring all of your children. And after seven, he said, is this the only one? Or oh, they said, oh, well, okay, well, well, there's, there's one, there's one. There's still one, there's still one. Yeah. But... He's not here. He's in the ship. He's taking care of the ship. So I just to like, just to like repel Samuel. Samuel said, we will not sit down. We will stand here. We will remain standing. See if all of you stand up. Right now, this is punishment for you. Stand up. We will not sit down until David showed up. And the rest of the narrative, David showed up. He was looking. And when Samuel was looking at him, the prophet of God that made mistakes seven times. He thought he was perfect. He didn't see him as a leader. He said he was Rudy. This summer, he was Rudy. He was good looking. He looked like a boy that would just put his, whose picture they would put in Playboy magazine. When they describe a future king, they don't describe him as Rudy. No, they don't, not, not good looks. Those are, the future, those are the features you put in some magazine or, or Vogue or somewhere. He didn't look like it. Or I said, since there's nobody else, since there's nobody else to pour the oil on, I'm sure that was what someone was thinking. Let me just, I can't, go back to, I can't go back to my house with this oil. I've got to pour it on somebody. It has to 
should be poured on somebody. Hey, it must be my head. Tell yourself, it must be my head. <laughs> so they poured the oil on him. It was not the pouring of the oil that made the difference. Scripture says, from that day forward, Samuel did his own work. But God, the Holy Spirit, came into the scene and did his own work. He said, and the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. And Samuel took his empty jar and went to Ramah. He said, God, I have done the work you have sent me to do. It's now up to you to know how you would make this boy take him to the throne. Whatever is up to God, God is a performer. God will not fail. Someone said, I have done my job. How you want to make this 10, 15 year old boy king of Israel? God, it is up to you. I'm going back to my house. And the Bible says, Samuel went to Ramah. Someone would have stayed behind and maybe formed a less enthroned David's political party. He did not. He said, God, it's up to you. All the brothers who were rejected in the first place, they would have formed a political action committee to raise money for David so he can now start contesting for the throne. But all of them, they went away. They left him alone. But what God anoints, God will raise. What God anoints, God will empower. That's why you cannot put your life or your destiny in the hands of any man. You cannot entrust it into the hands of any man. Now, fast forward the child of God. When David was standing in the valley of Ella. Fast forward it when David was fighting the lions and the bear. When he was taking care of his sheep. Nobody ever told him that he was going to be in this kind of situation. He knew for one thing, I have been anointed to be king. But everything around there doesn't look like somebody who was going to be the king. In fact, it was just a crowd of ten people. Eight brothers, Samuel, and David's father. There was no David killed ten thousand and Saul killed one thousand. It was like an ordinary ceremony. An oil wasting ceremony. But from that wastage, from that small activity, David became king. David, finally, in 2 chapter 5, sat on his throne. I want to tell you, the throne this year God has designed for every member of Sims of Joy family. The crown God has destined for every member of God's family. It's not just going to be a cliche. It's not just going to be another empty wall because in two, every year there must be something. There is a the place of contention. That's why you have to contend for your next level of breakthrough and authority. In this year of thrones and crowns, God is about to promote the family of streams of joy Amen. to a new level of authority, Amen. to a new level of influence, Amen. to a new level of power. Amen. I said God is about to promote the streams of joy worldwide Amen. to a new level of authority, Amen. a level of influence, Amen. and a level of power. Amen. You will no longer be ignored Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. That's where God is taking us to. I tell you, in this year, 2020, because sometimes when you look at this country where we are, you, you just when you look at those who call themselves Christians and what is going on and all the way the truth is now like a scarce commodity in the, or water in the desert, you can't say, are there really Christians in this country anymore? Are there Christians in America anymore? We see the lie and lie that is being regurgitated in the places of power. And those who parade themselves as Christians and pastors, even from the pulpit, you'll be forced to ask yourself, do we really have Christians in this country? But in this year of thrones and crown, God is going to raise godly leadership Amen. from streams of joy Amen. to lead the body of Christ Amen. and this nation, America, as a whole. Amen. You say, Pastor, you do drink something this morning. <laughs> It's like you don't even know your audience. <laughs> These people, they have their accented people. But God will do it in the name of Jesus. You know why I believe that? Scripture says, when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. <laughs> when the righteous are in authority, when the righteous sit on the throne, the people rejoice. When wicked people are there, 
People start crying. We know a country where people are crying right now because a wicked man is on the throne. And I know God will do this. It doesn't matter where you are seated right now. It doesn't matter your level right now. We serve a God who raised the poor from the dust. We serve a God who take the needy from the ash heap and set them to sit among the princes. That is the God you and I serve. To sit them among the princes so that they can inherit their throne. The throne God wants you to inherit. You were not born with it. But because God is so powerful, because God is so gracious, he says to say word. He said, I'll raise the poor from the dust. It means you're not destined to be and live in the dust forever. I'll raise them from the ash heap and I will set them with the princes to sit with the princes of the land so that they can inherit your throne. Everyone sit on your throne of glory right now. This year they will be dethroned. Amen. They will be dethroned. Amen. In the name of Jesus. And you say, God, how are you going to do this? Pastor, how is he going to do this? In Romans chapter 8, verse 11. But if the spirit of him who raised Christ from the dead, the spirit that raised him, if that, that if it, it dwells in you, he will also raise your mortal body. What in you? Are you after that? Your, your Holy Ghost is not just for speaking in tongues. It's more than that. This body right now is only a shell that is housing the Holy Ghost in the inside of you. So when the Holy Ghost starts the air lift, as the Holy Ghost is moving, everything around you will also move up with it. The same Holy Ghost that went and right now and disappeared on Jesus Christ and raised him from the grave. That spirit is in you. In this year, 2020, he will raise you from the dust. Where men have neglected you, women have said you no amount to more than this. The Holy Ghost in you that dwells in you, the power of resurrection, it will raise you up. It will sit you on places where you never dreamt about, places where you are not born into, places where they say you're not qualified to be. It will raise you up there. It will you will sit there. The Holy Ghost, it will level the playing field. God is a leveler. The princes have sat there for so long. They thought they pretended it. They said it's their bad right. But we serve a God who, who does come and model that field right now. And from this place, I see people who will be princes. I see people who will sit as princes. I see people who will sit as mayors. I see people who will sit as governors. I see children who will, become, who will sit as president in the White House. I see some of you right now. In years to come, you'll be visiting the White House. Say, My son, how are you doing? I just came to see you today. My son, I just came to see you today. David never knew why he was in the shipyard that it was possible. His name was not tied to royalty. But God, God took him there. God anointed him himself and took him there. But one of the things about the anointing God places upon your life is that your promotion, it will go to the place of contention. It will go to the place of contention. Every time God wants to take you to a higher realm of authority, you must be aware of one thing, that the adversary will not just become your cheerleader, say, oh, come on, go, 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 you become, oh, go, go. They will never be your cheerleader. If at all, if the enemy is your cheerleader, you know that, some, you know that something is not, it's just fake. They will be your greatest opposition. They will not just put their tail, tuck their tail behind and play dead and allow you to get to the next realm of authority. Before David could receive his real tone of authority, he had to first face a Goliath. I don't know what your own Goliath is right now. Sometimes when you hear the Goliath, you think of maybe one big sickness or you think of oh, some issue or maybe one place of work. Whatever your face is, you say, that's my Goliath. Sometimes your Goliath can be your insecurity. Your glad can be the fears you entertain, your insecurity, your fears. Sometimes for some people, it's just pity party. Oh, poor me, poor me, all of those things. But God wants you to face those Goliath head on and bring them down so you can go to your next level. But whether you like it or not, 
Goliath will show up. The increase in promotion is not going to come without a fight. Again, look at me. The increase in your promotion is not going to come without a fight. That's why you must be willing to fight. In 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 23 to 17, then as he talked with them, there was a champion, the Philistine of God, Goliath by name, coming up from the armies of the Philistine, and he spake according to the same word. So David heard them, and all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him, and were dreadfully afraid. So the men of Israel said, Have you seen this man who has come up? Surely he has come up to defy Israel. And it shall be that the man who kills him will be the, with the king and rich with great riches. We'll give him his daughter and his father's house exemption from taxes in Israel. Then David spoke to the man who stood by him, saying, What shall be done for the man who kills this Philistine and take away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that it should defy the armies of the living God? That's the language of hate. Who is this uh, uncircumcised Philistine? Who is this uncircumcised boss in my place of work that is causing me nightmare? Who, who is this uncircumcised man that says I will not have my peace? Sir? Who is this uncircumcised doctor's report that is big, that, that, that the state is how I'm going to end? Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that wants to defy the armies of the living God? And the people answered him, and this man are saying, so shall it be for the man who kills. One thing about your Goliath is that your Goliath will always speak and you will hear. When the Goliaths of life come, they look like invisible because their statistics is way out of this world. It's not, it's not like the normal statistics you know. When a man who is nine feet plus shows up, you know this man is nine feet plus. It doesn't look like the rest of us. So you will definitely notice him. So when the Goliaths of life show up, you will know. They speak. But one thing about David, a man who overpowered the giant and went to his next level of promotion, a man who occupied his throne was that the same thing others heard and they fled. He heard the same thing also. Scripture says, as they were caught, as David Goliath was there, he was speaking. They saw him in verse 24. Boom! They were dragged and they ran away. David heard the same thing they heard. But a man of faith will say, when others are saying, they say, cast him down. For us, it shall be a lifting up. When others are saying, the price of oil has gone down, my job will go down. For us, will say, even when the price of oil goes down, that's when I will prosper. Yeah. The same thing others heard, David heard it. But for him, he heard it and he saw an upgrade. <laughs> Get ready for an upgrade. David asked them, so this is the man. What shall be done for the man who kills this uncircumcised Philistine? When others were dreadful and they were hiding, David said, for as far as David was concerned, the Goliath going down was already a done deal. He already saw Goliath down already. He saw in his dream, Goliath was already down. Be at liberty to dream big. Feel free to dream big. Goliath was done already in his mind. Why for others, they were running away from Goliath. But in David's dream, Goliath is a dead meat. Goliath's head has been separated already. Be at liberty to dream big. So he was there asking, what shall be done? Oh, he was. Oh, he said, David, that man... Look at that beautiful daughter. That beautiful daughter of Saul is going to be yours. In that, David was being connected to reality. In this year, 2020, the things you are not born into, you will be connected to it. You will be connected to it. You will be connected to it. In the name of Jesus. Riches, riches from a king. There's an amount of money I can give you. And you will see say, well, Pastor, thank you. But there's an amount of money Bill Gates will give you. You too, you know that somebody gave you something. In this year, 2020, the gatekeepers of nations will come to you. The gatekeepers of nations will come to you. They will locate you in the name of Jesus. Creatures from the king. And he says something. Say, you'll be exempted from taxes. Not just you, David. 
Told us, you'll be working and you don't pay tax. Your whole family. There's a kind of blessing God will give to you that you not only be the one to enjoy it, even your family and your family, 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 family. It will be a family blessing. That's what it will be a family blessing. People will be struggling to answer your last name in this country. I said, people will be struggling to answer your last name in this country because of the blessings of God upon your life. So your family will be exempted from taxes. Even those who didn't fight. But as long as they answered the name Jesse, David, the son of Jesse, it became a pretended name. In fact, you have to take permission to answer that name because of the blessing of God upon that family. Let me tell you, there's a kind of blessing God will, will, will give to you. That even when you have done your time on earth here, and your bones are, are, are already decayed in the ground. Your spirit will still be dancing in the street. Your children will look at your picture. Ah, your great grand will say, Oh, no, thank you. No, your, your, no, no, no. They'll just be kissing you every morning. That will be your story. Yeah. Thank you, grandpa. Thank you, great, 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 grandpa. That is generational blessing. Yeah. Say, say, your family will not pay taxes. David's name was mentioned over 200 times in the Bible. More than Moses. More than anybody you can think of the Bible. That's what God can do. I'm the Lord God that raised the poor from the dust. The needy from the ash heap. And set them among princes. So that they can, they can inherit the throne of glory. Only God can. I just love David. I just love David. Say, so what is in this for me? But you know what? As David was professing and confessing the language of faith, as David was looking at the Goliath in front of him, he never knew that there was another Goliath behind him. Sometimes some Goliath are not very tall. Sometimes some Goliath, they come from your family. Another Goliath called Eliab showed up and said, what are you doing here? I know you. You're just a stubborn, naughty boy. While he was preparing to fight the Goliath ahead of him, a Goliath showed up from behind. In fact, how do you know they are Goliath? If their mouth lines up with the mouth of the enemy, they are Goliath. They tell you you are too small. They tell you you are not skinny enough. They tell you your accent is not good. They tell you you are not beautiful enough. If anybody who tells you that is one of the Goliath that says you will not go forward. Treat them like the Goliath. And so many people have not moved forward. They've not gone into their inheritance. They've not sat on their throne because of loyalty issue. Where he's my best friend. Where he helped me when I came to this country. Where he's my dad. Where he's my mom. He's my brother. You know, he has more experience than me. And because of that, people who should have gone forward in their divine assignment, they have died in the wilderness of life. You will not die in your assignment. Amen. You will not die in your assignment. Every, every opinion and limiting mindset, I break it this morning upon your life. In the name of Jesus. David was more concerned about the cause of God than the cause of men. Why they were saying this and that. David turned to the next person. If what you are confessing right now, look at it. When, they, when he was mounting like the enemy, David looked and said, Eliab, Eliab. Let me just excuse. Let me just see my, my, my way like it. Go sit down for one place. He turned to the next person and continued his confession. He continues. Let me tell you, I shared this many times. When I was still in one dunk hill, uh, everybody was saying, How can you make it? And, ah, you know, it's so hard coming to America. And me, I was still running the whole street of Lagos looking for work. And I just came and told her, I said, You know what? If getting visited to this country is this hard, all of my children, ah, they will be American citizens. Ah, they, they looked at me. They said, ah, oh, it's like it's like the, the pain and suffering you have gone through. It has it has spoiled all the network in your brain. <laughs> but I kept confessing. When your confession offends them here, what do you do? Look for the next person <laughs> and keep confessing. And I kept confessing. I kept confessing. In fact, back then, just because out of sympathy, a church wanted to hire me as a pastor. I said, no, this year, I have less than a year to be in this country. 
<laughs> I have less than a year to be in this country. I will soon be leaving. Hi. And all the people who went to lobby, nobody can lobby me to my destiny. Only God can take me to my destiny. So all the lobbies, I told them, go away. God has not sent you to anoint me or put me there to come and pastor the church because they were Chevron workers, oil and gas workers. They told me all the benefits. Know where God is taking you to. Know, where God, know what God has told you in the dark. No, we know it. So for all of them, David just said, you know what? Look for the next person. Look for the first, the greatest Goliath he fought was his, younger, was his senior brother. Because at that point in time, they had the capacity to turn his spirit around, to kill his spirit. Eliab was a depressing spirit. That's why in this year, 2020, they'll say, you know what? Don't mind them. Thrones and crown. Look at them. Thrones and crown. Yeah, we look at that big head. <laughs> look at that big head. Thrones and crowns. Thrones and crowns. When your confession offend them here, look for the next person and keep confessing. Death and life is in the power of the tongue. So it is time to, to renounce every limiting picture. Every picture of limitation, I renounce it over your life. Every picture of limitation, I renounce it over your life in the mighty name of Jesus. The kind of breakthrough God's going to give you is not just uh, an, uh, a breakthrough that would just be a flash in the pan. It's a sustaining anointing and breakthrough. I mean, right now, when it stays, when you get in that, you, it will increase. People just see your life today. This is where you are. The next day, you are going up. But one thing about, about this anointing is it. God will use the small things right now. David showed up. When, so when Saul looked at him, he said, you're just a mere youth. How old are you? He said, I'm 15 years old. Oh, okay. I see. 15 years old. So what is your resume? Well, I killed the lion and I killed the bear. He said, is that, is that all? Is that all? This man we're going to fight is not a lion, it's not a bear. <laughs> he has been a man of war all his youth. I, you cannot count how many lions and bears the Goliath has killed. In fact, he uses his hand to tear lion apart. So, so, David, take this weapon. Put it on. What I want you to know is this. The small fight, the small fight you think you've had, you prayed for headache, headache left. You prayed for fever, fever left. It's only preparing you for the bigger fight. It is only preparing you to be for the big It's only making you skillful. When the, when the big fight comes, you'll be well equipped to fight it. Because one thing you know, you're not fighting in your power. You're not fighting in your power. So David said, the same God that did it for me. When the lion came, and when the bear of life came, that same God is able, is able to do it. So David went. They gave him another man's armor. Never go and fight in another man's armor. He said, this armor will not fit me. This armor will not fit me. I can't fight in this. I'm not used to this. It might have worked for somebody else. But if you have not made it your own, never use it. David said, let me use what I'm used to. God will only anoint what has been tested in your life. He took his five stones. When the lion and the bear of life came, this is what I use. I have tried it. Tried and tested weapon. It killed the lion. It killed the bear. So I'm right now, even with this same Goliath, I'm going to fight him with this same thing. God will only promote in your life what has been tested. Right now, God is that things God has given you. He that is faithful in little, even more will be given to him. So faithfulness in the private qualifies you for the public encounter. There are people who just want to show up in the public arena and think they can do abracadabra like the seven sons of Sceva. And they ended up in disgrace. This year you make a commitment. I will be faithful in my private battles. I will remain faithful and strong in my private battles. So David went there, and you all know the story. Goliath came down. It wasn't David that did it. 
It wasn't just even the skillfulness of his sling. David went there with five stones. They are all kind of theology. Some said, well, he used this. He was skillful. He was very skillful. If David was very skillful, David would have gone there with just one stone. David went there with five stones saying, look, I'm going to endure. There's a place for endurance. If I miss the first one, I'm not going to back off. I'm not going to run. I'm going to stay there. Even when the heat is on, I'm going to do the second one. Uh, you know what? It's not about the stone. Uh, even when I miss, I serve a God who does not miss. So the place of contention, right? To stay, it takes endurance to stay in the place of contention. You keep confessing, even when people are laughing at you. When people are saying you are too small. When people say your experience is not enough. What you have is not good enough. You stay there in that place and keep declaring. It takes endurance. Isaac stayed in that land. The first one, he came there. They call it this set. He stayed in the first place. Place of contention. He said, I will not go. He keep digging. He went to the second place again. And there, they came again and they covered the well. They call it enmity. He went to the third place again. For Isaac, what happened? He kept digging. And this time, they did not show up again. It is only in the place of endurance that you'll be qualified. You'll be aligned for the increase in fruitfulness God wants to give you. It's only when you stay in the place of endurance. Every broken, everything you will enjoy in this year, 2020, there will be contention, but it doesn't make God a liar. This is a year of crowns and this is a year of thrones. God does not lie. In this year, 2020, you will sit on your throne. Amen. You will wear your crown. Amen. No matter your position, just say, I will endure. I will endure. I will sit on my throne. I will wear my crown. In the name of Jesus. Quickly, before I round up, there's something else that you need to know. Because God, is, God has determined that he's going to promote us. Higher level of authority, higher level of influence, and a greater degree of power in our life. But there's nothing that you need. need. True. The power of brokenness. So, David did not do half of what Saul did. David did not sleep with another, Saul did not sleep with another man's wife. There was no adultery. Afflicted with Saul. But so David was called a man after God's heart. Not because of his perfection, but because of the heart he had for the things of God. When Samuel confronted Saul, he said, Saul, what have you done? Look at what you have done. And I just want to backtrack. There's a way between godly sorrow and worldly sorrow. And there's also a difference between Godly brokenness and worldly brokenness. They are not the same child of God. When Saul was confronted, he showed a kind of godly, worldly sorrow. I have sinned against God. But, Prophet Samuel, can you do this? See, anoint me. See, just bless me in the front, in the front of the elders so that they will see me. So that they will. He was more concerned about his person he was more concerned about the people. Now, fast forward and bring David into the equation. When they say, David, you have done this wicked thing. You are the one. Oh, have mercy upon me, O oh God. According to the multitude of your mercy, forgive my transgression. Cast me not away from your presence. Restore a right heart within me. Don't let your Holy Spirit depart from me. David was concerned about the things of God. He was not concerned about the people. He was concerned about the Spirit of God not leaving him. And God said, I have found David a man after my own heart. Are there people this morning who will sit on their throne, who will overcome the giants that will confront them this year? Number one, endurance. No matter what comes my way, I'm going to endure. I'll keep confessing. I will stand. My faith will be on God. My faith will be on the Word. And also, there must be godly brokenness. There is power in brokenness. I'm going to seek after the things of God. Church, please, let's be up and standing. I'm going to, our time is well spent. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm God, I'm just going to seek you. Just say, I say, oh God, 
creating me a clean heart, oh God. I just seen this morning. I just seen this morning. You just want to settle with God. Are there areas in your life right now that needs to be broken? Are there areas in your life that you will receive? Oh God, show me any area of my life that has gripped you. Show me those areas of my life that has gripped you. Show me those areas of my life that has gripped you. Release godly sorrow into every area of my, broken, of, of my brokenness. Release godly sorrow and brokenness into my heart. Release godly sorrow and brokenness into my heart. Give me strength to endure. Give me strength to endure. And the godly brokenness I need to sustain your increase in my life. I'm ready for increase. I'm ready for increase, Lord. Give me strength. 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 You know one thing. Hear me, church. You know one thing this morning. Hear me. You know one thing this morning, church. For David to kill Goliath, he has to he had to load that sling with stone and swing it so hard so I could throw it. I don't know what are the giants in your life this morning. And he said, I need to bring down these giant, these Goliaths. But I need help in loading that those sling. I need help in loading those sling. The ministers of God are standing out here this morning. I can't just swing that sling all by myself. I need help. I need help. Just a part this morning. I need help to load this sling this morning. They will agree with you in prayers. They will join faith with you this morning. And the rest of us, let's just go ahead and just begin to pray in the Holy Ghost.